welcome to episode four of Aria's Coco. So today we're doing two major things. We're doing sewing patterns and we're doing, um, we're going to start on some beadwork. Okay, so this is episode four. All right, so uh, sewing patterns. I'm sure you've all seen these and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a brief overview of exactly everything these are. I've written some speaking notes because I want you to be have a really really good knowledge of exactly what these are and how you can modify them or how you can make your own patterns but understanding these is the key to everything buying your material making sure you have everything you need to make your dress regalia whatever and it's really a fundamental of sewing to be familiar with these patterns so first of all I'm going to be showing you um, this one here is made by a company called Butterick um, and they look like this. They come, they have envelopes, and they usually have a newsprint instruction sheet. And then they also have these translucent brown um, patterns. This is the stuff that you're actually going to be placing onto the fabric. So it's kind of like stuff when you first buy it, you know, like an air mattress or something. It's all perfectly folded, but once you unfold these and get the actual pieces that you need, you're never going to get it that flat. At least I never have. At any rate, so let's just jump right in. So, these patterns are made by, you know, companies like McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, Berta, and then there's a few new companies I've learned. There's Deer and Doe, Julie, Katya, things like that. So it's COVID now too, so that's going to make it a little bit challenging when you actually go to purchase these. Me, I've always, you know, gone to Fabricland, but now I live in Temiskaming, Quebec. So they're actually, I can't actually shop at Fabric Blend, but I did find another uh, website. It's called clubtisses.com. I think I said that right. Anyway, I'll post the link in my, in my, uh, in the comments. And I'll, mu and I must say before you even, you know, think about buying a pattern, you need two things. You need a piece of paper, just a scrap piece of paper like this one here and a pen and a measuring tape. A measuring tape is one of those cloth flexible tapes. They're like a dollar, two dollars or something at the dollar store. Get one of those because you're going to need to take measurements and be aware of your size. Like uh, me, I'm a size 18. I'm very cuddly. I'm not ashamed to admit that. That's just the way it is. So be aware that certain companies, uh, might, they might say size 18 on the package. But on, on the back, there's all kinds of useful information. We're going to go through that. Okay, so let's take a look at the back of this package. And you will notice that it has um, two sets of measurements. The first is, of course, uh, uh, imperial measurements, which is inches. And then the second is metric, which is centimeters. So, for me, um, imperial has been in place in the fashion industry for a while. And while there, there are metric conversions, I think uh, when it comes to dressmaking, I'm just more familiar with inches. So yeah, I go inches. I, I tend to use the, the imperial measurements. Now there's also something to remember when buying your fabric, and that's the word nap, N-A-P. And what that refers to is the actual width of your cloth. So you can have a 45 inch nap, or 115 centimeters, or a 60 inch nap, or 150 centimeters. So um, it does show you in a chart here which nap to use. Because for instance, it'll have two listings here. The first one is for the shorter nap, and the second is for the wider. So just be aware of that when you're buying your cotton or your material, whatever it is that you choose for material. Okay, so. When you buy this pattern, like if you were to go into a fabric land or a fabric store right now, what they would do is they would take out all the contents and they would pass you this envelope. And the reason is it tells you exactly how much material you will need. For instance, this dress here I actually bought for my jingle dress. And it's a short sleeve dress because I don't actually like long sleeves on a jingle dress. I know it's a standard to have nice beautiful long sleeves, but I like to have short sleeves because I can't stand long sleeves. It's just a personal thing. And then I like to make beaded cuffs. That's the way I do it. So, um, they will give you this and it shows you everything that you need to buy. Now, on the bottom, 
there's going to be a, a section called Notions. Notions refers to zippers, buttons, uh, elastic uh, interfacing, all that kind of uh, stuff that you might need. Uh, hook and eyes, invisible zippers, and it will tell you exactly how what you need. For instance, this one, this uh, this pattern here calls for a 22 inch long invisible zipper. And don't worry, there's the metric side if you prefer metric also. So, and it also tells you, for instance, here. Uh, for my size, which would be 1x, uh, 45 inch nap, I would need 4 and 1 eighth of, of material. So let's say I'm shopping and I, I see my material or I'm shopping online, then I can put in 4 and, but always have a little extra. I would say, I'd like uh, 4 and a half yards of blue or whatever. And it tells you on the pattern. Now, if you're making powwow regalia, I would suggest that you get more. And there's some, uh, there's, um, um, we will, in a later edition, I will show you how to measure for a shawl. Because that's a special measurement all in itself, and you're not going to find a pattern for a shawl. It's pretty easy. So, what else? Mm -hmm. Also, when you're getting your, your buying your material, um, get matching thread. You're going to get matching thread and you're going to get bobbins. Now, in the previous episode, I mentioned, mentioned about bobbins. And this is my little uh, box of bobbins. I bought this uh, at my local fabric store. And as you can see, I have all my pre-wound pre bobbins from my sewing machine. Um, and I have them in multiple colors. So this is something that you'll probably want to have handy, especially if you're going to do a lot of sewing. Bobbins are, 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 are great. And like I mentioned before, they come in plastic and steel. The older sewing machines tend to like the steel bobbins better. And I did notice through my internet research today, I, I made a mention before of uh, two types of interfacing. That's the sew-on and the iron-on. I noticed that some of the patterns nowadays are calling the, the uh, iron-on interfacing fusible interfacing has adhesives in it and if you're sewing it and your needle is passing through that that um, residue is going to adhere to your needle and break your thread a lot so if you're doing a pattern and you notice your thread is breaking like every two to five minutes it's because you're sewing through an adhesive so I would avoid that uh, finally final message on the sewing part Remember that when you're sewing, you're also going to be picking up an iron, distilled water, a spray bottle, an ironing board or an ironing surface, and a pressing cloth. These are very important because when you're finishing your patterns and you're, and you're uh, sewing a seam and you want to see how it looks and you're pressing it, you're going to press it open and yeah, a good quality iron is, is the best thing. So, so that's the end for this portion of sewing patterns. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will ask them, uh, answer them in the next episode. What else do I say? Oh, also, that's another note. Um, in making your own patterns, it's always good to keep newspapers around. Yes, good old fashioned newspapers because uh, when I make um, my son's uh, grass dance regalia, I make his patterns solely from newspapers because they're the same texture and consistency as this pattern paper that they include in, you know, patterns. And it's, you know, thin enough for you to pin onto your fabric. Final, final, final note on this section is pins. Buy a good quality pin because if you buy beautiful fabric and you pin it with cheap pins, what's going to happen is if you have like a satin or something, it might snag. So spend more money and get good pins. Like for instance, this these pins are Singer pins, and they also have a colored head on them because the last thing you want to do, especially if you have kids or pets around, is lose uh, pins, especially when you're doing a big project. These are not fun things to lose. But if you buy the colored ones, then you know exactly where they are. So that's my recommendation: is to buy ball head pins from a good quality from a good quality brand. These ones here are Singer. So yes, make sure you buy really good dressmakers pins, high quality pins. And I'm gonna change camera angles and we're gonna get into bead work. All right, let's get into some beading. So we'll over there, as you can see, I have double thread and I'm just gonna do some bead work here. Um, 
yeah, so uh, I usually like to watch TV or listen to some music while I'm beating. I have a, pl a playlist on YouTube. It's called Indigenous 2021. And I spent some time on that yesterday. And what I was just doing was, you know, adding some of the best uh, Indigenous music I can I could think of from across North America. So I published that. Uh, I will post a link to that playlist in the comment section of this video. So, and then feel free to go ahead and check it out and make suggestions if there are some indigenous artists out there that you think uh, people would like. So, yeah, I like beat work. It's very relaxing. And I do want to make a comment on sacred space. And I've talked about this before. And what that means is I've smudged. I'm in a calm and positive frame of mind. And I can just, you know, do my beadwork, you know, uh, stress-free. And it's really relaxing. So, as you can see, I double thread. I put two beads on at a time, or one, depending on the space. Like, I think I'm only going to get one bead in here. This is the uh, strawberry detail on the hair ties that I'm doing for my granddaughter. So, and I like these uh, furniture coasters because they're stab-proof. Like I mentioned in previous videos that some people like the felt pads for uh, keeping their beads in. <laughs> but I'm not the most coordinated person at times. So I tend to stab and spill stuff. Yeah, I've had a lot of beating accidents. And if you're a beater, I think the worst sound that you ever want to hear is... Everybody knows what that sound is. That is the sound of your beads spilling everywhere. See, and you don't have to be a speed demon, like uh, I usually like to listen to music or watch TV. Um, yeah, and it's really, really relaxing time. Um, you know, I also like to save a chunk of time so that I'm not rushed or interrupted because, yeah, that gets, uh, that can really interfere with your uh, beating speed and enjoyment. So I like to you know, put aside at least, you know, an hour or so of time for beating. And these little coasters, these are actually from the dollar store. These are furniture leg coasters, stab proof. <laughs> yeah, so uh, these are what I found to be the best uh, bead holders. And yeah, I've been beading since I was 20 and I'll be 50 this year. So, woohoo! I'm very happy about that milestone. That's a pretty good milestone. Yes, yeah, born in 1971. But uh, anyway, um, I mentioned in my previous video that I'm uh, I'm an activist, and what I like to do is, you know, connect people. As a '60s scooper, because I was born and raised in Saskatchewan, but I was not raised in my Indigenous community. I was raised in a non-native household in a non-native community in small town Saskatchewan so uh, a lot of my uh, beadwork and everything and sewing is, is self-taught and then when I found out about the powwow and wanted to dance I what I did is I went to my friends um, who were on the powwow trail and I asked them I said well how do you I really want to dance how do you go about doing this and so they they spoke with me they took the time and guided me and so I did go to ceremony for my for my uh dancing and I've been dancing since I was 20 and so I've been uh, I started out in fancy shawl that was my first regalia but then after that in about the year what 2000 I transitioned into jingle dress and one of my first jingle dress dresses was a navy blue and orange jingle dress that had uh, the the flower of Saskatchewan on it, which is uh, tiger lily so that was a really nice dress. I really liked that dress. That was my first jingle dress. I would like to point out a few things, you know, like uh, when, before you start beading, make sure you have everything ready. Like uh, I always keep my beads or my needles, you know, before I used to have a curtain and I used to put my needles into, cur into the curtain before I uh, started beading. But these, this little thing is, is much better. Have everything you need ready first, which are all your beads. Make sure they're at the ready. Uh, your thread, 
your beeswax and sometimes when I'm beading like I uh, if you're wondering about the length of uh, thread I just go uh, two arm lengths because it's you know double threaded and then I put beeswax on it and you'll notice sometimes when you're halfway done beading that uh, your thread is going to start to knot up on you again then go ahead and reapply beeswax beeswax is a lifesaver and yeah once you get to sewing it's really important that your thread doesn't knot up on you and beeswax is the most awesome thing for that I do want to mention though uh, pure beeswax is probably the best and the way you can tell it's pure beeswax is it doesn't melt in the sun and it really has a nice scent to it it's a natural product you know makes me feel more close to the bees okay, just but uh, yeah I love beeswax and you and every uh, bead store probably on Turtle Island will have beeswax available uh, with all your beading supplies Okay, now before we get too far along, I did want to show you some of my uh, beading projects. Um, I have, uh, I've done peyote stitch on feathers. I've done, because uh, I'm also an artist, I've done logo design. This is for the Tomogamy First Nation powwow. That's my daughter. That is in 1990, no wait, 2006, I believe. Um, I do loom bead work. This was all done on a loom. Um, this is my daughter in 2006. I uh, did a day star on her regalia and I had a powwow and I've been a powwow vendor since 2000 so what you see is my vending booth in the background um, this is one of my beaded cuffs from my earlier jingle dresses oh no no oh and I've done painted boxes this is a painted wooden box this is a, a, a hairbreadth I did you recognize that guy from Vancouver Olympics uh, this is a fancy shawl I did, and some beadwork. This is some really er early bumpy beadwork I did. And my phone just doesn't want to work. Some more beadwork. I do a lot of NHL crests. There's uh, Ottawa Senators. This here is a Pikachu modeled by my son. I did a Pikachu medallion. Oh, and I did Spongebob too. I think Spongebob went up to Nunavut. Oh, I did that one a while ago. What else? Oh, and the North Bay Battalion. I just sold that one last year at a market on uh, the North Bay waterfront. And then again, a picture of my daughter again. So yeah, I will have more samples of the beadwork I've done over the last few decades in future videos. And I'll have some more pictures of powwow and, and stuff like that too. Okay, so um, just to recap, these are some items that you need for sewing. Get fabric only scissors or cutters. They can be rotary cutter, cutters, really nice scissors. Um, get a measuring tape. Uh, they come in two types, imperial and metric. I prefer the imperial one. But yeah, I keep actually keep mine in my purse. That's a good place to keep it. And finally, a sewing gauge and a seam ripper. These uh, are essential tools and they're very, very, very cheap. I got uh, all these items at Walmart for less than 10 bucks. And so in closing, I hope you enjoyed episode three. Please uh, join us again for episode five, which will be out within the next week. And this is some beadwork I whipped up this week for somebody out west that I care about. And yeah, this is a good uh, Valentine's Day idea. See you next time.